So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our last talk here in InterSchool Lab. The next speaker needs no introduction, so there is none. Um, hello, thank you for all coming. Um, I'm sorry the room isn't bigger, but I wanted this to be a boff. Uh, can you hear me in the back? I'm sorry. Good, okay. Um, so, this, I'm... Lucas Nussbaum was going to give me a hand. I'm not sure if he's here. There you are. Okay, so I think we'll probably both end up co-moderating whatever discussion we have. Um, so I wonder how many of you have seen this web page? Um, could I get a show of hands? So it's almost everybody in the room. Um, well, that's a good thing. I wrote this thing back in, uh, I think it was 2007. It was back when I had hair. Um, <laughs> And um, I sort of, at the time, intended it to be a kind of a meme, so I think it might have worked, because at least I got everybody in here, maybe. Um, and the basic idea behind this is um, to make testing a little bit more like maybe it was intended to be, um, or maybe not. It's, I, won't, I won't speak for AJ. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so I won't, I won't, okay, wait, wait, wait. testing wasn't AJ's idea then. So anyway, I won't go over the details, right. I won't go over the details of the things as almost everybody's read it, but the basic idea behind constantly usable testing is just to find a way to make, to allow some percentage of our users, let's say 50% or 25% of the ones who currently aren't very well served by outdated stable releases that happen every couple of years, which is a great thing for a lot of our users. But for the other ones, to give them some kind of release based off of testing that works reasonably well, maybe say as well as Ubuntu, or as well as some other um, non-enterprise level release. And um, so that's the basic idea. The question is, can we make it work, and can we make it work without a lot of work? Yeah. Testing not currently uh, okay. always usable. Right. So there's a couple of reasons. Um, you can start off at the installation level. Um, new releases of the Debian installer that install testing happen and then sort of bit rot away until they no longer completely work. You'll have installation DVDs that'll continue working pretty well, but all the other media doesn't work and also Maybe DI doesn't get a release for testing until testing has been, you know, until testing has been in development for a couple of years, like happened just currently. We currently have had one DI alpha since the last release of Debian. So before that alpha, there was no way to install testing, and now it's six months old. Um, there are other issues, of course. There's um, sometimes the release team decides to remove packages from testing just because they have RC bugs and they feel that they want to get the RC bug count down and maybe motivate people. Um, and of course, if that's a package that a user needs, then testing won't be usable for them. But that might be just for that user. They're not going to pull X out or something, hopefully. So I, I think there's all kinds of issues, and I'm glad that people are adding stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry, the headset doesn't fit me. <laughs> so we have the mic here. Yeah. Um, I could, the headset's there if someone wants to run around with it. I'll, yeah. Yeah, I can repeat questions. That'd be fine. Um, so what I wanted to do is just get all the teams in one room who would be impacted by testing and as well as anybody else who's interested and just try to, I mean, by, who would be impacted by a constantly usable testing and try to hash out how it would impact them, to, uh, to what degree, and see if there's enough interest to actually do it. And there's a question in the back, and I'll repeat it, or not. You need to switch it on. It, it's off. Hold it. Don't, don't turn it off. Just, leave it on. Just leave it on. Yeah. Um, OK, so one of the other reasons why testing isn't always usable, which is also one of the things that we're going to need to address with this, is that right now um, there isn't a separate stream for testing between security uh, patches uh, and regular uh, updates. That's not true. 
Well, there is a separate testing security team. Right. What I'm saying is, is that There's if you need all the security patches for what you're running, you can't necessarily only point to testing security because the security patches may be for a later version of the package than what you're currently running kind of a thing. Um, is, packages it, that are uploaded to testing security updates should be installable against testing. So I, I mean, I could be wrong. My, my understanding was is that um, not every security fix goes um, through testing no, no. security. No, no, most security fixes don't go through testing security. We have Moritz here. Which, I, and is there any else in the security team here? Okay. Um, my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong on anything that I say, um, is that there have been about five updates that went in through testing proposed updates since the last stable release. Every single other <laughs> security hole has been fixed via normal propagation from unstable. Um, and there's some delays associated with that, but if you look at the number of, say, current issues right now, I think that testing has uh, maybe half as, half the number that stable has, and unstable has half again <coughs> as many. Is that about right? Yeah. So um, what that implies... So, so what, what that implies is that you've, is that I, I haven't made my point clear. My my the, the my point is not that testing doesn't get security support. I know that it does. My point is that in order to get security fixes for your testing box, you have to upgrade, and that okay. uh, and there's yeah. a lot of package churn in testing, which right. means you're doing a lot you of have upgrades. Have a point. And the, so if we if we made a test if constantly <laughs> usable testing worked by having a release and then waiting six months and having another release. If you want to get a security update, you might have to upgrade all of X and it might be broken and there might be some other issue. Of course, hopefully testing would at least keep the dependencies consistent and you could upgrade and it would all work. But it, it, also you're dealing with upgrades and of course upgrades within, sta within unstable don't always work and upgrades within testing may not always work either. So, you know, to some degree this is a thing that testing can't satisfy as well as stable does because we can't check that upgrades work quite as well and there are more upgrade scenarios than there are with stable. I mean, b batching to six months but making sure that security updates are available independently before six months would, right, would address the problem. Right. I'm not saying that's, yeah. a, that's not a good solution. You're, I'm just saying okay, no, you're one right. of the things that makes it unusable right yeah. now is there's so much churn okay. that it's quite difficult to keep up to date and feel secure. I, I think you're right. So maybe the solution is another queue and another another archive that then has um, any security update that gets into testing is basically backported to the previous constantly usable testing installation release or something, but yeah, that kind of so gets into in the implementation, right. which I'm not sure about, of how constantly usable testing would really work. I think Right, right. So, so in fact, I think one of the biggest problems, Joey, is, is calling it constantly usable yeah. testing well, that's and focusing true. on the notion that what we want to do is make testing the yeah. thing that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. When we had the original set of conversations in my office in HP a whole bunch of years ago between three of us who were, were DDs at the time about what the problem was at that moment, um, and at that moment it was that the way we did a stable release was we made a copy of unstable, called it stable, and then worked to try and make it actually releasable. If you weren't around back then, um, man, you know, the world is different than it used to be. Um, and, and what I observed and what I wrote an email about was that I thought the vast majority of our users actually wanted something in between those two states. And that's sort of you know what you've been echoing in all of this. And then when AJ read that and went, oh, yeah, you know, as the person trying to help work on or, or a person trying to help think about how we should do stable releases, this is a great idea. Let's have a rolling release candidate and let's be doing that. What we've ended up building and testing is this process that's all about um, promoting packages in, in, a, in a way that leads us towards something that we would want to release as stable. And I don't think it's the same set of promotion rules you'd want to have for something that you know, meets that original set of criteria. I, um, I think you might be right. I'm not, it's, I think it's really hard to say exactly for sure, but I do know one thing, which is that if you have a different set of rules, you have a team that ends up doing an equivalent amount of work that the release team does now, and that's a lot of work. Well, except that I think, you know, with respect, Russ, this is something we could probably have a long philosophical discussion about, but what I always thought most users really wanted was unstable without the brown, brown paper bag bugs that the notion that every time you looked, it was sort of fresh and new and, and good was in fact what, certainly on the desktop, what most people really wanted. Um, it, this, Why this, not have that Why is that the, Well, we have testing that's propagation delays. Yeah, because that's inconsistent with trying to create a stable release because stable releases are all about managing you know, large package inter interdependencies. And right, but 
But you know, I, I also, I mean, if you run testing, I think that the propagation delays and all that kind of thing, they don't make it unusable. Correct. That, so I think as far as constantly usable testing goes, it is usable in that regard. Right. It might be a little bit out of date. It's not horrendously out of date. X is probably new enough that Keith will actually be yes, reasonably all the, happy. All the client you machine... just tell you to install something or experimental and it'll probably work. Yeah, all the client right? machines in my house other than mine run testing. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's not impossible. It just so, it does read, so, I mean, lead to interesting yeah. issues from time I, to time. So I really feel that there's... And could people please tell me if somebody writes something interesting up here? Because I obviously don't have time to read it all. But... Um, I think that there's two brand, there's two basic approaches. The first approach is just doing cut releases, which are cuts of testing. You just stop there. You say, we have an installer that works. We have a desktop that works. Basically, we, everything else seems OK. There's nothing horrendously missing. We take a snapshot. We don't change the snapshot again. And we have a security update queue type of thing. And we have installation media. And I think that is not a horrendous amount of work. It's kind of just more frequent stable. It no. It, it's a different kind no. of stable or a no, snapshot. It's, kind it's of not thing. the same because if people who are running this, I mean, one way you can do it is you don't have security updates. If people who are running it want security support, want ongoing support, they don't. They install it and then they upgrade and follow testing along, or they stay where they are. So um, it it it's more um, just formalizing what we already do, which is having so, DI releases and all that kind of thing. So a meme I wanted to throw out is that I think we have sort of problems at both ends of the spectrum here because um, we, we've now built um, a set of project infrastructure processes and teams that are all about getting to the next stable release for whatever definition of a stable release is that we're operating under at that moment. And that, that sort of, it, it causes problems at both ends. And what I mean by that is, I wasn't joking earlier today when I said I want unstable to become unstable again. Um, and, and we've had a number of side conversations you, this but week. I don't about, know that this solves that. No, this doesn't. But but while people are thinking about perturbing the way we currently have packages flow from an upload to a stable release and, and various paths and detours they may take in the process, let's also think in terms of how do we get to the point where the thing that as developers and maintainers of Debian that we're running on our development machines or in our development routes or however we like to live is really up to date all the time and current and, and interesting and, and worthwhile. And that means not you know finding ourselves in a situation with great frequency where we're gating uploads to unstable on the basis of that's going to trip up some transition in testing or getting yeah, to yeah. a stable. That's obviously a big issue. Um, <coughs> I, I can repeat. Uh, Maybe. My, wouldn't you need a, something like a freeze or a concept of a freeze so that at least the minimal uh, subset of packages? Yeah. No. Uh, he's asking if if we need. He's asking if we need a freeze before basic before a cut release, basically. Yes. And the the answer to that is no, because what you do is you just look <laughs> at the current state and you find a good one, or you find a reasonably good one. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can have some things broken. You just document them, and you say, don't use these things if you're using this cut release. Um, that means the, uh, the subset of packages which you want to make sure work well individually and together should I, be quite small, I, right? I would say that subset would be the ones installed by DI on a default install, plus a few other things like useful servers. Okay, so the rest programs. are used at your own peril. Basically. Exactly, yeah. Okay. It, it, I think if you look at it as, a, as an Ubuntu universe, multiverse, whatever they call it, model, um, it's, that might be a reasonable way to go about you know, cutting through the vast, back, the vast complexity of it all. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm dropping things left and right. I'm also Ashish. Hi. Eek. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're talking about cut releases that are just snapshots of testing, and I want to contrast that. Uh, I think that that's not something I'm interested in using. I'm interested in maybe installing that and then setting sources list to testing. Um, is, uh, how do you, isn't that what everyone wants? Do you think that everybody wants to follow testing all the time? I think. Well, I mean, I think that the... See, is, isn't I that think that one good thing about having the releases is that you kind of get two things, you know, you kill two birds with one stone. You can have, you can satisfy both groups of the users, uh, assuming that you can actually satisfy people who want to follow testing. I mean the non-stable, the people who want something unstable. Right. So they can have a semi-stable release, which is just install the snapshot and security updates, or they can install and upgrade to testing and follow testing. How is that different from the 
installing stable and upgrading the test? Um, it, it means that you've installed, it isn't different. Well, okay, you're right. <laughs> uh, okay, no, 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 Keith, 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 no, 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 the, the, the difference is that you're keeping testing usable, so you're trying to deal with issues that are keeping, that are keeping testing from being usable on an ongoing basis while all this is going on. So you make a cut release, and then you say, okay, we're going to make sure that upgrades to testing from this are working, okay. And we're going to make sure the testing, we're going to try to make testing work better for people. That's basically the whole idea behind this. So um, you, could, you could upgrade from stable to testing. It doesn't matter how you get to testing. But once you get there, it should be something that we can say to users, this is something you can use, not this is something you can use to test Debian. And I mean, it's partly just a perception thing. We partly just have to make a commitment if we decide to do this that we're going to tell users that's the case and actually follow through with it. Does that answer you? No. No? Okay, well. Uh, okay, so I had just a comment, on, a comment on what Bidel said. So it is true that we have now created teams which kind of are oriented in releasing how, how we do that now, how we do releases now. But what I find it really interesting in the way Joy presented Cat on that web page is that it seems to be quite orthogonal. So it seems to be something that can be implemented by a new separate team without impacting too much right. with the existing infrastructure. So I think a very good exercise to do here would be to actually kind of, you know, being the devil attorney of your presentation and checking whether it is really something which is orthogonal to the rest, whether it is really something that does not impact right. too much right. on the work of teams mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. security and right. So I appreciate that we go philosophically on whether it is something we do want or not. Yeah. But so I mean, if there is some people interested in doing that, the most useful thing to do here is verifying how much it impacts right. on the work so, of others. So that's these things down here, right? And we should have a release team thing somewhere too. I guess it's under archive. So. Um, I guess we don't have any um, FTP masters in the room, right? Oh, hi. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not up on who's FTP master team or anything. Who do we have? Release people in the room. Yes, there is Mehdi down there. Neil. Oh, okay. Hi. That's right. You're new. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I've already, you know, Ganif already posted a little bit about how it would impact the archive. Um, the basic gist of it is if you make, uh, I think, is if you make a um, snapshot and you don't update it, there's an initial little mirror hit of 300 megabytes or so for the package's files, and that's fine. And the extra space, I don't think, is a huge concern. If you have a rolling release, like another version of testing with different policies or something, they're not quite sure how to deal with it. They might have to remove some, some package's files that aren't used a lot because it hits the mirror every four times every day, of course. Um, so I guess the other part of the top one there is release team stuff. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure that constantly usable testing could make the release team's job harder, but I would kind of like to hear their opinion on it. So. Well, I'll uh, certainly let Adam follow up on this as well, but. Um, I think we just need to work out what we want to use testing for. I mean, certainly at the moment, the 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 use of, for example, it says um, yes, important packages um, get temporarily removed, right. and it's not just for RC bugs. Mm -hmm. um, again, this it's for transitions, about, yeah, actually, for transitions right, yeah. and various things. So the ability to intentionally break mm -hmm. testing is is very very useful oh, to yeah, be able uh -huh. to get stuff in right. and. Um, it's a case of, of, of how we do that and, and how we manage. And I think it's a case of managing it. If you can, you know, if we can know that testing is in, in a usable state and somehow communicate that to users for a while or let them install an upgrade later or that kind of thing, maybe that would work. Could it be just called constant frozen? Um, I don't see how it's frozen, though. We don't want to do. Oh, it's pretty much the same kind of. Uh, so you decide the snapshot, and then you just allow packages which you think they're useful. Yeah, in but terms I don't think that I don't think that we're trying to push in individual packages to a snapshot because then you have dependency issues, and it's a big mess, and it's a lot of manual work, right? So. 
So I, I think one of the things that would be really useful is if somebody could come up with a good metric of determining what the state of testing is currently. Mm -hmm. So you could have a weather report that says, yes, today mm -hmm. testing is mm -hmm. storming. Do Unique. not install. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know, I used to run automatic installation testing for several architectures. Only I386 and AMD64 really matter for this, I guess. And you know, you can get a failure report. You can say testing doesn't install or testing, you know, you could see if a desktop came up, maybe that kind of thing. Right. Oh, I think too, we um, could also have even just straight dependency graph oh, yeah. availability yeah, sure. and, and packages are missing. Well, so that could be calculated right. in addition to, mm -hmm. obviously we need real live installability testing. So, so the original thought we had in all of this was that uh, many years ago, like 97, was that this thing between um, unstable and stable would be characterized by the fact that it would be churning faster than stable, but it would never be structurally broken. And this leads me to ponder sometimes what it is about testing and what it is about the promotion rules and the testing or the overrides that we have to, to stick in to, to get around the promotion rules to testing that causes it to actually be broken in I ways don't. that... I think we, I don't know that I would call it broken at any time. I mean, it's always in, it's always in a consistent state. It just might, it might not be in a state that lets you do exactly what you want to do as far as, you know, if you want to install a new piece of software, but the old packages that you have installed will continue to work fine. But if, I'm you know, that, is it's constantly usable for me. Uh-huh, yeah. So I'm still I not quite clear on what's currently well, not making it constantly There are more right. packages. And the day the package is not there, you try to install it. So Zach said there are more packages than you use, and if you try to install one, then it's not usable for you. So packages can are periodically removed from testing for various reasons. Part of the reason is, as Neil said, because they are RC buggy and we want to release. Another reason is we have a big transition going on, and you have to remove a couple of packages from testing if you want that transition to happen. And for, th for a thing like CAT, it's not acceptable that one day or two days or for a week a package is not installable because it's just not there. Uh, but, Zach, to follow up on that, I, it, it is I think it's acceptable if, well... One way you can do this is you can have two lines in your sources list and try to install from the old cut snapshot, but I don't know if that would really work because of dependency issues, so it's kind of hard to think about. I really wonder about the differences between the new approach and the old approach because the, the hammering transitions in thing isn't much used. It's used as a last resort breaking architectures that are not the main ones, so they shouldn't okay. break anyway, and if you say it's mainly AMD64 and i386 anyway where you did your testing, only those mattered. Those should not be broken at this point. And do you have any example of an important package being removed? Um, the only examples I have are that I remember running testing and trying to install something and it wasn't there, but I can't tell you what it was. And it wasn't something highly important. It was probably some random small leaf package that only I use or type thing. Yeah, okay. So, we are, you know, it's about leaf packages, that's true, but... Something GPS isn't in test. Just, just as an example right now, for example, Tango GPS is not installable in testing because it was renamed to Foxtrot GPS and the new Foxtrot GPS package provides a transitional Tango GPS package but um, the Tango GPS package was removed from testing because the source package is no longer in, in unstable. Uh, so somebody asked about the, the reason why you wouldn't just install, testing, install stable and upgrade to testing. And the obvious reason that we see all the time is that stable just doesn't support your hardware. Um, oh, that's so true. The, uh, the, there's, there's something a bit further down there about... Uh, uh, DI installing a snapshot, and I think that would, uh, right. and you know the work we do in beta release mm -hmm. and things. I think it would, just, it would really help DI. Um, I we, think it would we too. We run into a number of yeah. situations. We spend a lot of time spinning our wheels dealing with some issue that won't affect stable in the end. Or, or not even that. Sometimes we sometimes we have problems with you know we can't install because uh, that's, that's what I'm talking some, about. Some <laughs> so, some package in testing changes semantics and the installer hasn't been changed to cope uh, yet. Yeah, or yeah, the, right. Or that, the alpha release. Yeah, right. That's why I'm saying. The installer right. generally bit rots down to not working. Right, to some so if degree. you sync the whole lot together, yeah. uh -huh. it exactly, a whole lot easier. Uh -huh. Right, 
And that's why I think that having a, an actual release is a good idea. I don't know if having a separate rolling release on top of that is also a good idea or not. And my feeling is that we could start by doing the one and see how well users take to it and then maybe think about doing the other one if it comes to that. But I think doing the other one would be a lot of work. And I would sort of like to hear from the release team if I'm right on that. I mean, <laughs> I was going to ferry the microphone around. So anyway, we can't win it all. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be people in the room. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so we have a couple of downstream distributions that do something like this. Obviously, we have Ubuntu, and we're not going to have Ubuntu merge into the Debian release team. There's also Sidex. So yeah, this, Mepis, I think, also does something like six months releases on top of Debian. So uh, can we reach out to those people and just ask them to maintain Mepis I, inside Debian? I would love to recapture those people or capture those people. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I mean, and I would, uh, when testing is cloudy, I think we should just, I, I think that there should be, well, like stable testing, Testing when it last wasn't cloudy, unstable. Yeah. And, and I think a, a testing when it last wasn't cloudy, one easy way to get there is just have a cut release, a snapshot. It, it would be nice if it were a snapshot that were constantly <laughs> updated, but you have to do a certain amount of manual work there. So I kind of just wanted to reply to Phil. So I'm very much sure that most of the time testing is not broken, that most of the time all packages are there. Mm -hmm. But I think with something like cut, we are trying to we are trying to reach out a kind of new eye of users, which can do, which wants something like stable, but which wants just more up to date software. And we most we mostly have that already with testing, but just just not quite. It's a perception and thing cut, as much as anything else. Right? Yeah. And Testing, as you have it now, is kind of unique in distribution out there. So I think the point of cut is just, in, is just adding that, that mostly, I mean, what we, we miss for, for being really a, a, stable, a mix of a stable release with updated software. So even if we, it is okay most of the time, we need to fix that most and making it, all packages are installable always. Thank you so much for pointing that out, that um, having a rolling release that's always usable is A, something that, as far as I know, no other distribution does, and B, sorry? Well, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, but, and B, something that basically fits the world as it is today and not the world as it was when distributions were shipped on floppies. So, um, I, I guess, um, let's see, we've covered, have we covered security? I was gonna say Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I just heard the one main problem that people have brought up was that maybe a package isn't uninstallable sometimes in, in testing. And I don't know how, op uh, how often you actually run into that. If you're a user and you apt get install Iceweasel and it's not there, I don't know how many times that happens. You may already have it installed. So I think the, the situations where that happen is, happens is very low, but we can, we can fix that by just communicating to the user, like apt get install Iceweasel, and it can't be installed in testing right now, so it could just say, uh, sorry, unstable. right now it's in transition, <laughs> yeah. try again later. Yeah. Or, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so actually, let's, let's get down here to the bottom of this thing and talk a little bit about marketing type stuff. Do we, ha do we have people from the publicity team in the room? Because I neglected to invite them, but I think they got invited in the end, right? Anybody? Publicity team or marketing or website, anything like that? <laughs> they don't want to raise their hands. <laughs> well, um, what will we call it? I don't know if we can get away from the name testing right now. I don't know if that's the most important thing to do. It's kind of a code name. You don't even actually see it if you install testing. <laughs> Uh, that would be great, but 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 what my actual what my original um, thank you for all the thank you for all the bike shedding. Um, <laughs> um, my original proposal was just to call it cuts of Debian or cuts of Lemmy or whatever, and so then you you have the first cut, the second cut, and then the final cut, which is stable. Wow! Oh, nice. <laughs> so, ah, thank you for putting that in. <laughs> um, so, my, qu my question, I mean, what I want to get out of this, I think I've kind of got partially, and we can have as a big long thread with all kinds of details at some point, 
is just a general feel of whether the affected teams, the release team, the security team, et cetera, feel like this is going to be a horrendous idea that's going to cause them a lot of work and make it impossible to ever release stable and stuff like that. Or, and we have a hand in the back. Sorry, oh, I'm um, sorry, we have a hand in the back from the video team. <laughs> um, so I wanted to get that idea, and I sort of get the impression that people don't think it's a bad idea right now. Hey, uh, Joey, sorry, re just really quick, you had said, you had said earlier, I thought that you had two procedure, you, two ideas about how this would work. Right. Did, you, did you outline both of them? I'm sorry, um, the, first the first idea was to have the cuts, which are snapshots, which are basically suites in the archive named <laughs> something like, you know, Lenny cut one or something of that ilk. And the second, with whatever frequency is managed yeah, best, a ballpark idea. It, it could be every six months, it could be every four months, I don't know. I think we've, if you look at Debian installer releases and take that as a baseline model, the best we've managed is every four to six months. So that's my feeling. Um, and then the second option is to have some kind of a separate suite that's updated four times a day, just like testing, but has different rules of what goes into it. And my feeling is that's more work, and Colin has a... Are you done? I guess I was wondering how we'd go about uh, this kind of meta, how we'd go about testing the cut in advance of right. its snapshotting. Um, well, I guess you want more than four hours to test it is the question. <laughs> I think what you do is you look at the, hmm, I don't know, Colin, maybe, you, maybe we have to have a way of doing a snapshot and then renaming it, you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Uh, um, right now we have a rule that only, we support upgrades, we support upgrades only from one release to another. Right. What are we going to do with that? This is something that the cut team has to deal with clearly. They have to figure out if an upgrade is breaking between the previous cut and current testing, and if it is breaking, they have to file bugs about it. So they have to do some kind of upgrade testing. Um, and this could be something that, I mean, partly things will occasionally break, and we can't, as I think I said at the beginning, we can't guarantee the same level of stability, clearly, to users who are using a rolling release. But we can check upgrades between one cut to the next cut so people who just upgrade and then upgrade again in six months or whatever, we can make sure that works for almost all packages. Just maybe not quite as well as we currently manage for stable because we take a couple of months to really look at it in detail. But we can still get a pretty good idea. And there's a question in the back. We have four, four. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. So I'm sorry, but I don't really see the point of uh, snapshots every six months because if you, if you want to snapshot testing every six months and release that, I don't see any, what's the value we are going to add to compared to Ubuntu. I mean, uh, um, people, okay. I mean people which, no, wait, I'm just not finished. I think that the real good point about testing is a con constant flux oh, of I agree. new packages. And that's what users that we target want. Right. But and the only way to get there is to install testing or you can install stable and upgrade, but that assumes that your hardware works in stable. So it's a way to get to testing it's also a way, if you don't need completely the absolute newest stuff, it's a way to stay at a, a nice baseline and then jump up another after so six months. In that case, we only need installation media every six months, snapshot of installation media every six months. That's right. So mm -hmm. that's we already have installation media snapshots to testing on an ongoing and best effort basis, and they generally work. It really helps to snapshot the whole thing. It really does. Yeah, I, oh. I'm sorry, I didn't even realize you were in the audience. Hello. It doesn't light up when it's on. Ah, okay. Um, so, a few things. Yeah. Uh, you can hear me all right? Uh, I need to look at my laptop, so that's a bit difficult. Um, so, when we started doing, when we started doing testing, um, as far as security and installation was concerned, installation was via boot floppies. I don't know how many people here remember boot floppies, but <laughs> if you don't, you're better off not remembering them. Um, and it would take years to get boot floppies updated for the next stable, let alone doing three or six or whatever monthly snapshots. 
and security, we didn't really have. We had no idea what, so what security holes were in testing or stable. Or, I mean, were unstable at that point, really. So, um, yeah. Some people have mentioned about the weather report for for testing. At the moment, there is one broken pre-dependency in testing, and uh, about two to. Gah. Can you tell how many packages are in, say, unstable that aren't in testing that used to be in testing? Uh, not on the web page that I've loaded up. Okay. No. Oh. Um, so one of the problems with testing is that it doesn't ever check that two packages are installable at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you might get to the point where uh, numeric's installable but not KDE at right. the same time. Yeah, sure. So th there are things <coughs> like that that just aren't tested. Uh, that kind of thing you want to test by basically doing installation testing and installing a task and making sure you have a desktop with yeah. all the packages you need or something like that. Or so you, or can you could you even can do it by dependency analysis. Um, yeah. And the other thing I would have thought would make sense would be doing a snapshot of all the packages and then doing the doing the build of Debian installer. Oh no, you're right. And well, matching that up. And that gives you maybe a week, two weeks to... For sure we would want to do the anything. CD build against it. I, doing the installer build against it, the installer isn't really that dependent on exactly what version of Debian is built against, unless you're really mm -hmm. worried about, say, libc having changed or something. I so, think. so I guess the thing I meant more for that was just making sure that in the last four hours nothing had broken the installer in testing as you made the snapshot. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I just wanted to say, uh, you want to know how it impacted on, on doing support. Um, uh, the project I'm working with, Debian EPC, uh, is there because we have to have Debian in a state that works for people who are getting the latest models of EPC, and that's always changing, and so Cut would exactly address that. Um, what I'm having to do now is say, uh, use the daily installer, and that's not always working for them, so that causes extra support cost for us that we can't necessarily handle. So cut is ideal from that. And the other thing is I'm using Debian Live to build. Um, now we can do a an, an combined installer live uh, image. And so this gives them at very little risk um, to be able to take the next cut release um, and try it out and see if it solves the problems that they've been having uh, and, and then make the decision to go forward or not. So, very good. Hi, I'm... Hello? Hi, I'm Drake Diedrich. I um, am one of the people who wrote Deb Marshall. Uh, we did something where we took one extra layer of subdirectories inside the disks and, you know, the name of the distribution, and then we kept every single one of the packages files. That way, when we created symlinks between the different subdirectories, we could go forward, go back, and never lose anything and do further testing on each one of those snapshots and be able to adjust our symlinks to keep track of everything. Right, I don't think we have to deal with symlinks. I mean, Dak's good at doing suites and stuff, and we can have multiple snapshots, as far as I understand, without too much overhead. Well, it was, the main thing was to um, be able to do things like um, different people have, you know, nine days out of 10, even unstable, is perfectly good and usable. So if you keep the snap, keep a, a sim link to the days when it's good, then it's much easier to um, you know, risk the uh, the tenth day. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Badian, um, and I've been uh, running testing for the uh, longest amount of time because I was simply tired of having uh, with stable having to go and hunt down uh, back ports and, and so on and so forth. Uh, one thing that I do is uh, if I install it, I install app list bug. Also, yeah, yeah, definitely. and that way I yeah. I can track what Apple I'm installing. Applebugs is great as long as you have a fairly technical user administering the machine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it sometimes even though it says, well, this package don't install, there's something wrong, and I say, okay, pin. Um, mm -hmm. It changed some other stuff, so that even though it pinned the package, but it also break, sometimes breaks the package right. at times. So it's not yeah. perfect, but it keeps me abreast of exactly what might be wrong within. Uh, testing at a particular moment in time, and so therefore, but for for the most part, my laptops, my servers are all running testing, and I I like right. the fact that I'm always fresh and mm -hmm. going. I think I think that most people in the world today kind of expect that as the default. You know, they they get it on their phone, they get it well, sort of on their phone, 
you know, the, yeah. the, the expectation isn't that there are big monolithic releases mm -hmm. anymore, and that was kind of the whole inspiration for having CUD. No, there was that. There is Fredo, which is kind of managing the queue. <laughs> so it's that, Colin, <coughs> and you. No. But he, he's had the microphone for a yeah. while. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of worried about the periods at which you are trying to do the cuts because I think it might dissuade users more from using your cut system as opposed to cover that small percentage. The use games I'm thinking now is that uh, this process has to be as automated as possible with at least the least possible amount of human intervention. So you will not be able to do enough quality checking and that it's in the best possible state. It's something uh, not exactly definable. So at every cut release, you will have at least some amount mm -hmm. of packages broken. Oh, I think you're probably right. Yeah. which means for system, uh, for people using that cut release, it's completely unusable because they uh, cannot wait until the next no, cut release. No, because general, generally the things that will be broken won't affect most users. You can test for the things that affect most users. Yes. You can't test for the long tail of things that don't. But what you do with the long tail is you tell those people, if you're using this list of packages, you need to upgrade to testing after installing cut. So, but yeah. I, what this means that at every cut release, you will lose like 1% of users. Well, two testing and then the next cut. Oh, right. They might not want to migrate because they're already happily using things which they so um, solve the so problem. Yuri, you might be right. I, I think that what, what it sounds like is going to happen, if you're correct, is that we're going to reach some kind of a homeostasis where the people who are using cut are the people who are desktop users, say. Yeah. And I think that's probably OK. I, and maybe they're not desktop users who are doing, say, the previous talk in here was about multimedia, you know, music stuff. Maybe they're not that set, because that's too broad a set for cut to be able to handle. And maybe that's OK. So my suggestion, basically, is uh, to do a cut as often as the automated testing system allows you to verify that the testing archive is in a reasonably sane state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That yeah, might no, help We definitely a lot. need to be able to look at the state when we do the cut and take, pick the right moment to do it. And, but you know, if we look at it, we, we already do this to some extent. We wait to make Debian installer releases until everything is, until the moon's aligned, basically. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so my, my comment is kind of related to this. One basic question we should ask ourselves is whether when you take a cut, you are allowed to you are allowed to change something mm -hmm. before releasing the cut or not. If we are allowed to change it, maybe that can easily fix that one percent of packages mm -hmm. which are broken. Yeah. But the second point I was make I would like to make is that uh, if we just say install from cut and then upgrade to testing, we will back at the problem that on some days user can miss some packages. And I think this is not acceptable, acceptable if, we're if we're going to propose this to users like you said, desktop users. So I think we should have two baselines. When you install cut, you get the baseline of the cut, and you get the baseline of testing. Maybe the baseline of testing is optional enabled or not. And the point is that if you're missing some package. So, so you're, saying, you're saying to have both cut and testing in sources yeah, that's list. It. So yeah. if we, no, what I'm saying is no. that if we want to give testing to cut users, then it should not be a remove cut and go to testing. No, it but should, you be, a, it should be cut testing so that you have should a be pinned so, you, so it isn't used by default. Exactly. And you Something say like slash that. testing and you get So it. that if someday a package is removed from testing, and, you mm -hmm. have a fallback yeah. from, from the last cut. I agree with the proviso that I don't think it would work all the time. Also, you, you spark an idea in my head, which is that we could possibly use volatile for making changes to cut for, say, you know, backporting fixes, or we could use backports for that matter. Um, I have a question to the, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, uh, involved with BBC. Um, you mentioned that the daily installer was broken a certain percentage of the time, and uh, I suspect you may know better than uh, the installer team does quite exactly how often that is. Um, just to get some kind of sense of how far we need to go to make this work, roughly how often would you say that testing is just plain uninstallable right now? Is that me? Yes. Um, I think a lot of the time... I think a lot of the time it wasn't just that the Debian installer was... Bro well, wouldn't install. It's 
to find a mat it was difficult for me to guide users through the process of finding the matching boot dot image dot gzip mm -hmm. and the ISO which, which sometimes. Is, which is kind the of the files just weren't there. Yeah, I mean it's kind of just the fact that like we've said DI does rot and it can be hard for users to find the right yeah. one. And if we that's have right. a release with a nice website that says here it is, that solves a lot of issues so, if it's yeah. built against a stable thing. Exactly. Um, we're kind of getting low on time and I unfortunately have an appointment after this, so um, I don't know how many, could I just get a show of hands, how many more people have, do have questions? Uh, yeah, okay, let's do some more. <laughs> Maybe yeah. before the end you should just comment on how to go forward. Yeah, Sorry. totally. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, the thing that I'm seeing, you know, doing CD builds regularly yeah. is trying to get a consistent set um, when DI is basically, as you say, is rotting away. Um, you know, which sounds like horrible, a horrible thing to, way of describing. Obviously, people are working on stuff, but um, there, can, there can be quite a, l a long period where what we currently have in the testing images um, isn't installable at all because um, actually making sure all the packages migrate through and all the UDEBs are actually in, in a vaguely usable state. Yeah. Um, it's really quite fragile at the moment. You're right. You're right. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, my main worry would be actually <laughs> trying to keep a usable DI going with it, going with these cuts. Right. Um, and that's why I'm saying maybe a six monthly cycle because I think we've managed pretty consistently to keep DI going that way. Maybe, maybe not quite as well in the past couple of years, but I think over the past, what, how long has it been? A while? Seven years? Seven, eight years, <laughs> yeah. And we've managed tolerably well at that. And I think, you know, I'm really hoping that if we have this cut thing, that's going to inject more energy into DI, into all these other things. So that, that's really part of my hope here. Who's yeah, next? Cool. As a comment on Zach's comment, in, as an alternative to pinning, might it be possible to have some sort of cut proposed upgrades for the small proportion of that 1% that have very vocal users? Yeah, that, that was back to what I was talking about with using either volatile or backports. So just having some repository with a few backported packages or whatever you need to make, cut, to make the previous cut work. I think it's a good idea. So I have one perhaps obvious comment and one concern. The obvious comment is that each cut uh, would need something like mini release. The same kind of thing that you do for a release uh, would need to be done, including creating media. The concern that I have is testing that we get for the next Debian release, not the next cut. If we bleed away users to the cut, we are bleeding users away who use hey, to test no, our next no. release. No, uh, would that would be, be a concern? We'll be using testing, so no. He's partly right and partly wrong. It's a two-pronged thing. You're bleeding some users away from using the newest testing because they're staying with the old cut. You're pulling in a lot of other users, hopefully. So maybe, and it sounds, and according to Yuri's, you know, in, Yuri thinks that maybe the people who are using the old version of cut will be desktop users. And we have a pretty good idea about the desktop in general. We don't have a good idea about the long tail of packages. And they'll still be using testing. And they'll still get tested more. Yeah. And I'd say about the EPC, where I see this going, um, is that uh, uh, often they need the very latest to get it going. So CUT gives them a safe starting point to perhaps go forward where they would have previously stayed with Lenny and caused all kinds of you know, grumbling and whatever about things never working for them. Um, so I think I see it as propelling them forward to testing by giving them a margin of safety first. Yeah. I think we probably only have time for maybe two or three more questions. I think you should wrap up, in fact. Okay. Okay. So I think if the target of CUT is desktop user that want to have the, the latest software, couldn't we just learn from other distribution and select a subset of packages that should be in a good state and use this as a criterion to declare testing as um, workable? I don't. Uh, that's, I think that's part of what we do, but I don't think it's the entire intent of CUT to just do that. I think we want to do something with CUT that no other distribution is doing because otherwise, I mean, that gives us a competitive advantage to have something that is a rolling release that is usable. And so we, for, that pur for that purpose, we want to, have, to support all the packages as well as we can, but we, want, we especially obviously want to focus on desktop stuff. I don't know if that answers you or not. Yeah. I hope so. Bi annual releases is not rolling. No, but 
Biannual releases aren't the whole story. That's my point. You have biannual releases, you have testing. And you try to keep testing more usable than it is now. And you, and you also advertise to users that, hey, we have testing. It's usable. Here's how you get it. Well, um, what, I'd sort of, what I'd like to do is get a sense if there's anybody brave enough to think that they might want to be involved on a team for cut. If I could have some hands. I don't recognize all your faces, so you can go ahead and raise your hand and it won't mean so anything. who would like to be on a cut team? Here? Yeah. Anybody? AJ, awesome. A lot of people. We have six. Yeah, I'm, I'm only like this, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I saw six or seven hands, something like that. It sounds like enough people to have a mailing list or a wiki or something, and talk about it, and maybe you know flesh out a design doc, and maybe start trying to do. I think that you can try to benchmark cut by just. I mean, right now this is a wonderful day because we've just frozen. And we actually have on Debian release a list of every single thing in testing where it's not usable. So is the zero? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my point is that we've been talking about ways that uh, testing isn't usable. And for most of the day, every Debian developer that thinks that testing has an issue with their package has been frantically posting a Debian release. So that's a great information. And it's a good starting point, obviously. I mean, cut zero would be a good thing to do. And we could do it by getting DI working, making images, making a snapshot. And well, hey, the snapshot's already almost made. So it's a launching point, I think. It would, Can I you think scroll it, the screen down? I actually wish the release team had waited two months, but hey. <laughs> but this would be your final cut, right? The freeze that, is the final cut. Uh, the, the freeze would probably be like the, the next to last cut. Yeah. Joey, scroll down. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so if we have a team, a possible team, I thought I'd go ahead and make a website for it. And since that's what Lars and I are doing, I thought I'd put in an advertisement at the end. I hope you don't mind. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think I'll wait a minute just to let the advertisement soak in. <laughs> <laughs> so should we need to pay after the first month? Or? Uh, this is a free <laughs> software project, therefore it is free. Okay. <laughs> and unfortunately the bandwidth in here obviously isn't great. Oh yeah, it's my server, that's it. Which theme do we like? This one? No, that one's ugly. <laughs> So um, my, my idea is that this will be cut.debian.net. Unfortunately, I checked cut.debian.net and NX domained it, and so I can't actually type that in today. <laughs> uh, once that clears out, I'll fix it, and it'll be that. So I think we can turn this into a wiki and put up a proposal and make an alias project in a bit, which takes a little bit longer. It's a wonderful branchable thing. And, uh, <laughs> and make a mailing list and take it from there. So I hope that... Uh, we get a lot of people working on it, and I hope that it happens. And that's all I have to say.